Good day YouTubers, today we're going to look at a wonderful, holy, factual passage from the Holy Bible. And we're going to start from verse 8 in Luke and chapter 2. Luke and chapter 2. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, which is Christ the Lord. So this is a promise being fulfilled. A promise in Zechariah chapter 9, and Psalms 110. These shepherds are Jews. The Jewish prophecy is being fulfilled. God is bringing to them the king so he can continue where David left off and rule over the whole of Israel. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. So see this message is all about the babe. Why? because he will become an adult and save Israel. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. It's not like the new Bible say to men of good will. No, it's good will toward all men, not just certain men. Note that in this message that the angels gave, there wasn't one word about Mary. This was only about Jesus. Only about Jesus because only Jesus is the Savior. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. Isn't it a wonderful thing that the angels made known unto the shepherds that Jesus was born in this specific place and that they could just go there and see the babe for themselves? These were shepherds. They were seen as being unclean by the rest of the world. This was a very wonderful spiritual privilege that many people didn't have and God brought it to the shepherds who were considered unclean by many in that time frame because they were unclean in that time frame it was a bad thing for Jews to be unclean and the king with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger and when they had seen it they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child and that's exactly what I would have done if my savior the king was born then I would tell people if I was a Jew, knowing that we have been waiting for the Savior for a long time, being Jews who haven't regained control over our country for years and years and years. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Mary had to ponder all these things in her heart. She had to ponder them. This means she didn't understand all of this. She was not all-knowing. She was not omniscient. She was not omnipresent. She was not divine. If this is Mary, and Mary does not know all things, that would mean she does not know all ailments of all people. If she does not know your pain, your sorrow, how can she hear a prayer? It's impossible. If she is this Mary of the Holy, Righteous, Glorious Bible, hearing prayers have simply not been ordained for Mary. Wow, now we have a question. If hearing prayers have not been ordained for Mary, then to whom has it been ordained? And the answer is, unto Christ. In John 14 verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. 
in Psalm 72 verse 15, it says that prayer shall be made for him continually. Even Mary prays unto Jesus in Acts 1 verse 14. Of a truth, it is as it is written in 1 Corinthians 1 verse 2, that them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus call to be saints with all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, both theirs and ours. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, as it was told unto them. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Mary was impure. She needed to be purified because it was the law of Moses that impure and unclean people should be purified. Mary was not purified and so she needed purification. It was her purification, not Joseph's purification, not Jesus's purification, not Herod's purification, not the angel's purification, not the shepherd's purification, her purification. She was unclean. According to the law of Moses were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. This is why Jesus had to be born first, and his seven brothers and sisters had to be born after him, like we mentioned in previous videos. He was the firstborn son, and the Bible mentions that, calling him the firstborn son. If he is the firstborn, that means there was a second and a third and as we know for other children verse 24 and to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the lord a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons let's look up this law as it is written in the old testament leviticus in chapter 5 we're reading from verse 1 and if a soul sin and hear the voice of swearing and is a witness whether he hath seen or known of it, if he do not utter it, then he shall bear his iniquity. Or if a soul touch any unclean thing, whether it be a carcass or an unclean beast, or a carcass of unclean cattle, or the carcass of unclean creeping things, and if he be hidden from him, and if it be hidden from him, he also shall be unclean and guilty. See, guilty. This is the context of Leviticus chapter 5. It's talking about sacrifices for the guilty, not sacrifices for the innocent. Let's look at verse 6. And he shall bring his trespass offering unto the Lord for his sin which he hath sinned, a female from the flock, a lamb or a kid of the goats, for a sin offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for him concerning his sin. Why is this significant? Look at verse 7. And if he be not able to bring a lamb, then he shall bring for his trespass which he hath committed two turtle doves or two young pigeons unto the Lord, one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering. Wow, that's what Mary did. In this context, it is as great as the lamb that was brought for a sin offering. Because this man could have brought it. It was just because he was not able that he brought the turtle doves and the pigeons. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 15 and verse 25 for more information. It says, And if a woman have an issue of her blood many days out of the time of her separation, or if it run beyond the time of her separation, 
all the days of the issue of her uncleanness shall be as the days of her separation. She shall be unclean. Every bed wherein she lieth all the days of her issue shall be unto her as the bed of her separation. And whatsoever she sitteth upon shall be unclean, as the uncleanness of her separation. And whosoever toucheth those things shall be unclean, and shall wash his clothes, and bathe himself in water, and be unclean until the even. But if she be cleansed of her issue, then she shall number to herself seven days, and after that she shall be clean is for when a woman is pregnant or hath an issue. Is this something that Mary went through? Yes, she was pregnant with Christ. Let's look at what verse 29 says. And on the eighth day she shall take unto her two turtles and two young pigeons and bring them unto the priest to the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And the priest shall offer the one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering and the priest shall make an atonement why because there was sin for her who mary this atonement was made for mary why because she was unclean before the lord for the issue of her uncleanness if mary was sinless such a sacrifice was not needed for her she could have stood in the temple and said, No sacrifice is needed for me. You don't need to make a sacrifice for me. I am sinless. But in this situation, according to reality and according to what really happened, Mary admitted that she was sinful. She admitted that she needed to make a sin offering. The only sacrifice that can save a person is Jesus. And he is resurrected and he lives today. And if you call upon him, if you believe on him alone, he can wash away your sins. He alone can make you a new person. He is the Alpha and the Omega. There is no other divine but the Holy Trinity. There is no other sinless but the Holy Trinity. Only Jesus, his Father and the Holy Spirit can forgive sins. Only his life bleeding blood back in history past can wash away your sins. If you neglect to believe this, you have neglected one of the most essential realities that the Bible and truth has to offer. That salvation can only come by faith. And that is not in Mary. Don't build statues unto her. Don't worship her. Don't venerate her. Only to Jesus Christ alone directly should we go and worship Him alone for true salvation, for eternal salvation, for eternal life, for being washed clean, simply by faith. Please believe on Jesus Christ. Amen.